Hello team, welcome back. I hope you're all good. Before we get into today's lesson, can you please make sure that you've got any of your equipment and your exercise book or whatever else you're writing on? Pause the video now if you need a sec to sort yourself out. All right, so before we get cracking with the content today, I just want to reiterate the importance of you accessing these um, remote learning sessions. You are going to be sitting a full language paper one this term, so before February half term. I'm not going to tell you when because you're going to panic, so don't worry, you will be prepared, but it means that every lesson and every hour on your timetable of English is so, so important to give you the best possible chance in that language paper. OK, if you are struggling with the paper or any of the questions or any of the content at all, please, please email me. OK, I'm more than happy to give you a call and to work some things um, out with you. OK, so. Can we please get our title dates? And hello down now for me, please. Today we are focusing on question two. So pause the video and get that down. OK, now you should be ready to complete your do now task. I would like you to answer these five questions in full sentences. If you don't do it in full sentences and you look back for revision, these aren't going to make sense. So please do it in full sentences. Pause the video and complete your do now, please. OK, if you're back, that means you are ready to correct. So grab your purple pen, tick across your answers and make any corrections. All right. Question one is worth four marks. Only need to spend five minutes on that. It's focusing on AO1, so identifying information. Where possible, we should always start with it, he, she or they. And you should always draw a box around the focus lines. OK, correct your answers. Pause the video if you need a second to do that now. All right, so yesterday we looked at question one. Today we are looking at question two. So I'm going to give you an overview in the exact same way. So question two is focusing on analysing language. And this is your AO2, your assessment objective number two. This question is worth eight marks, double question one. And therefore, you should spend double the time. So spending 10 minutes on this question. Just a reminder, at this point, you would have already read the fiction extract through once at the beginning. And you would have read part of it through during question one. So question two will always look something like this. Look in detail at the extract from lines blank to blank of the source. How does the writer use language here to describe or present. So these questions are kind of similar to the skills that you would do for the literature paper by making a point um, using evidence and analysing language. So we're in good habits already with this. OK, so how do we approach the question? Like yesterday, I would really like you to get these kind of top tips down. So can you please pause the video and write this title for me now? All right, if you've written the title, let's go through some top tips. So when you are looking at the fiction extract, you want to look out for words and phrases um, such as like emotive verbs or adjectives, methods, imagery, simile, personification or different sentence forms like short sentences and lists. Don't worry too much about sentence forms. We, I will be teaching you about that um, a little bit later in this unit. You must only focus on the question keywords. Like I said yesterday, if the question is asking you to analyse the language that presents the dog and you write about the language that presents the dog's food, you're going to get zero marks. So make sure you're focusing. And the same kind of thing, make sure you're drawing a box around the lines. Like I say, it's easier to do on a paper copy. But on the um, Word documents, you can just um, highlight it like we did yesterday. Oh, sorry, pause the video now if you um, need to get those down. All 
All right, so how do we actually answer question two? What do we write? What's our structure? So this is the checklist that we're going to use to write our question two. So let's just briefly discuss these one by one. So the first step of your paragraph is to give an idea to answer the question. So this is very similar to how we start our paragraphs for literature papers. So the writer presents whatever the question is asking you about and an idea in your own words. You're then going to use quotes. As always, I'm going to expect you to embed them just how we do it in literature. You're, you should have no excuse not to embed your quotes now because we've done so much practice. Then you're going to identify a device, a method, so um, a simile, uh, a verb, um, a metaphor, a personification, whatever it might be. And then you're going to talk about what tone it creates and why it creates that tone. And you're going to develop this in a lot of detail. You're going to explain what that word means, what it's referring to, what the metaphor is comparing in lots of detail. We're then going to make links between different bits of the text. So, again, very similar to our literature. Um, this, whatever tone, is seen later or earlier in the text when, and then you embed a new quotation. And at the end, you finish off by um, writing briefly what the writer is trying to show us. Um, so reinforcing your original idea. This kind of looks like a shorter, more condensed version of our literature analysis paragraphs. It's the same skills, okay? the exact same skills, just a slightly different structure. You need to repeat this paragraph three times, okay? preferably three times, and that will give you the maximum chance of getting the eight marks. So writing three of these. OK. So. As always, we're going to look at some examples from White Fang um, and then we are going to actually no, you are going to write a, a question to answer for propping up the line. So for White Fang, this is the question. Look in detail at this extract from line seven to 16. How does the writer use language here to describe White Fang's attack on the strange god? As always, before approaching the question, you want to highlight the lines, so 7 to 16. And then you want to highlight the question focus. So I'm focusing on the description of White Fang's attack on the strange god. At this point, obviously, you would go to the extract and draw a box around it. We don't have that possibility right now, so I've cropped it onto this PowerPoint. But let's reread it. The strange god paused at the foot of the great staircase and listened. The white fang was as dead, so without movement was he, as he watched and waited. Up that staircase, the way led to the master and to the master's dearest possessions. White fang bristled, but waited. The strange god's foot lifted. He was beginning the ascent. Then it was the white fang struck. He gave no warning, with no snarl anticipated his own action. Into the air he lifted his body in the spring that landed him on the strange god's back. White Fang clung with his four paws to the man's shoulders, at the same time burying his fangs into the back of the man's neck. He clung on for a moment, long enough to drag the god over backward. Together they crashed to the floor. White Fang leaped clear, and as the man struggled to rise, was in again with the slashing fangs. OK, so at this point, exactly the same process as question one. I would go through and kind of highlight um, pieces of information about the attack. OK, um, so I'm going to highlight that he um, watched and waited and he was like without movement. So it looked like he was dead. Um, and then again, that he bristled and he waited. Um, I'm going to say that he struck. Um, gave no warning or no snarl. He lifted his body. Um, he clung with his four paws and he buried his fangs into the man's neck. He clung on 
and he dragged the god over backwards. Um, he leaped clear and then he again went back in with his slashing fangs. These quotes, you would need to write about all of them, but it's good to have as many options before you actually start writing the question. Okay. So, this is the checklist. So, what I'm going to do now for you is I'm going to model a paragraph. Like I say, you're going to write three paragraphs. So, I'm going to model the um, first paragraph for you. Okay. So, my first step is to give an idea to answer the question. So, looking at that extract, which I have um, printed out in front of me here. I'm going to say the writer presents, because we don't have the writer's name. Um, the focus of the question is White Fang's attack. And I think that it seems quite violent. Um, I'm going to write that it seems shockingly violent. Okay, so that is my step one done, and I'm going to change that red because I've done that. All right, my next step is to use quotes. So I'm going to start it off with this sentence starter here. So when, um, I'm not going to write describing X, I'm going to change it up slightly. I'm going to say um, when he pounces on the strange god. So I'm just giving context of the quotation. I'm going to write the writer describes White Fang. And I'm going to choose one of my highlighted quotes. I'm going to choose this one. White Fang burying his fangs into the back of the man's neck. Excellent. That is my quotes done. Next, I need to identify new devices. So um, looking at the top tips, I can look at words, I can look at methods, or I can look at sentence forms. I think I'm going to focus on burying. So I'm going to write the use of the verb. Verb is a doing word. Burying is something that he's doing. Burying. Now I need to do what tone it creates. Creates a. I could write violent, but it's a bit repetitive because I used it up here. So I'm going to write malicious instead. Creates a malicious tone. And I'm going to now explain why. Um, if he's burying his fangs into his neck, it seems like he's. He's like clinging on and he, he not he's not giving up and he wants to inflict like maximum pain on this man. Um, so I'm going to write because it highlights his relentlessness. What word? And his capacity to cause the intruder, the strange god great pain. Excellent. So I have done that step there. Okay, now I need to make a link. So my tone is malicious. So I'm going to write this malicious tone is seen. I'm going to pick a quote. Um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to briefly mention the word struck. The malicious tone is seen, and that is earlier in the text, when he struck the strange god. And you don't have to write an extra bit of analysis here. You could stop there, but we are very bright, capable individuals. So I'm going to write a brief bit of explanation here, which highlights... Um, an action of like striking seems quite quick 
looking quite uh, powerful. So I'm going to write which highlights the speed and force of his attack. That is my link. That bit there, that extra analysis will um, kind of push you up into analysing more language, which is the focus of question two. And then I'm going to write my overall idea. So overall, the writer presents the attack. And again, I could write violent, but it feels a bit repetitive. So instead, I'm going to write as uh, brutal and vicious. Okay. And that is my first paragraph done. All of those steps to produce that paragraph. Okay. All right. So paragraph one. Now we move on to the second paragraph. So um, what I would like to do now is there is a document attached on Show My Homework that is titled Question 2 Model. Could you go on to Show My Homework and open that now for me, please? Pause the video here and do that. Okay, so you should now have the Question 2 Model open in front of you, which looks like this. This is the second paragraph of my Question 2. So let's just briefly read it together. The writer presents White Fang's attack on the strange god as calculated and precise. Just notice here that I've used a different idea. When he initiates his attack, the writer describes how White Fang lifted his body in a spring. The use of the verb lifted creates an orderly tone because it emphasises the careful thought out movement and almost elegance of White Fang's planned attack. This orderly tone is seen earlier in the text when he watched and waited, which implies he is alert and observant. Overall, the writer presents the attack as carefully planned and accurate. This is my second paragraph analysing the language um, that the writer uses to present the attack. So, as you can see at the top, what I would like you to do is on the question two model document, I would like you to colour code the paragraph to um, highlight where my model paragraph does each of these steps in the checklist. So pause the video now and colour code that for me. Okay, if you're back, that means that this is colour coded um, and it should look like this. So please, please make any corrections that you need to on your copy of the model. Um, I'd recommend that you save this model um, onto your laptop or whatever you're working on so you can refer back to it if you need to. So please make sure that it is highlighted correctly. So as you can see here, each step follows in chronological order. And the largest step is the analysis here. So pause the video now, make any corrections if you need to. All right, so that is my two paragraphs, but I need my final third paragraph. So what I would like you to do now is to use the checklist here in the same way that I have just done to write the final paragraph for question two based on the white fang extract. You might want to uh, think about these ideas. Um, you might want to talk about White Fang's intelligence. You might want to talk about how White Fang seems merciless. And you also might want to talk about the attack as a protection of his master. Remember, the focus is to analyse the language, identifying the devices, the methods, the words and explaining them. What, create, what tone does it create, sorry, and how do you know that? Okay, that's where you're going to get the marks, the analysis of language. So pause the video now and complete the final paragraph of question two. Okay, if you're back, that means that you have completed the final paragraph 
what I would like you to do is to please submit your final paragraph as well as your colour coded model to my email. This information is on Show My Homework, so you can double check what you need to submit there. I look forward to seeing your work and as always, I will see you in the next lesson. Take care.